Hi, so I'm going to show you how to make a tiny word clock like this. Now, um, unfortunately, the camera shutter is interfering with, um, with what you're seeing here, but it is actually saying quarter to 12 and all of these LEDs are lit up. Um, and so I'm actually using a, a little LED matrix and on this one, an Esprino Wi-Fi. But I'm going to show you how to make one of these using a Bluetooth Esprino board instead. So first off, the things you need are um, a LED matrix like this. You can get these in lots of different shapes and sizes. This particular one is a white one. Um, and then you need a um, Esprino MDBT42 board and, um, and a little power connector. Now you can use something like Esprino Wi-Fi like I did in the, um, the other one you saw, or you could even use a uh, Esprino Pico. But we're gonna use this because it's got Bluetooth on board and that makes it a really nice, convenient way to set the time. So all you have to do with this is um, you turn this over and you can see that you've got eight pins on each side. Now obviously they don't quite fit that, but um, what you want to do is to arrange that these pins go into the top eight holes and these three at the bottom you're leaving um, leaving clear because these are the power pins which, um, which you can't change from the actual device. So basically all you do is you put them over there and then you push it in slightly to bend them in and then you, you put them over here and then you push this in slightly as well and um, after a while you end up bringing them all together and um, you end up with something that looks like this. Now I've actually soldered on this little power connector as well uh, and the power connector literally it just pokes uh, into the holes there. So um, yeah when you've got this you've got this nice little compact unit with, um, with the LEDs on one side and this hidden on the other. You can see that I've put it on and I've just pushed it in slightly so that all of these are are bent and aren't entirely straight. Um, but yeah, there's very little to do there. So if I um, attach some power to this and set it up so that you can actually see it, we'll have a go at um, getting the LED matrix working. So if I um, connect to this device, uh, this is just standard web Bluetooth connection. Um, the, the pin namings are, are really difficult on these um, LED displays. And in fact, it's not immediately obvious where pin one is. There's a marking there, but there's no real pin one marking. So rather than um, going through the data sheet and seeing things like this and trying to figure out which pin's which, I've actually come up with a little bit of code that lets you um, just do a test and work out exactly where every pin goes. So you just copy that code um, you put in the pins that you've connected to here um, in no particular order. Um, these are off the website. They are the pins that you would use for the um, MGBT42 module. Uh, then you upload it. And then you on start test. So um, now it will, it may light a, um, a row. Of course, it, it may not do anything. But you basically just um, enter the um, the key that you want to to set. So um, this one is the sixth row up from the bottom, so I hit six. Third row up from the bottom, nothing, so just hit space. First row, space for nothing, for nothing, second. And you continue like this. So now we've moved on to columns. Um, and now we've got this um, set of pins here. So if we just copy this and we paste it in here and we'll use the other code that was um, available for, for actually writing to the um, display. When we upload it, we have to run start scanning first, um, but we'll see it's actually writing hi there and actually it's upside down, but it's, it's easy enough to change this. G dot set rotation. In fact, this isn't um, rotated, it's just flipped. So if we do this, and I'll just make sure that this gets called, and I upload it again. Ah, it's flipped it that way. 
So we actually need to rotate it around that way. Here you go. Um, so now we've just fiddled with get rotation until all of this is correct. Now the next step is to actually turn it into a word clock. You know, and this actually it looks reasonably professional, but it's literally just this pattern printed onto a um, piece of label paper. So all you have to do is align that paper with this. So the easiest thing to do for that is to um, set everything so all the LEDs are on, and then you'll get an idea of how everything's aligned. So we'll just say g.fill rect uh, 0.0.7.7 to fill the whole area. And then I'll peel off the label and we'll try and align it. We basically, we just try and align it very quickly over here so that um, all of these are lit up and that nothing's clipped. You know, it's quite difficult to fit all the words you need for a word clock into an 8x8 grid. And um, this has been done already by someone called Andy Doro. This is the, um, the link you have to go to to find out all the information about his clock. Um, but these are the actual characters we're using. And you see, I've, I've labelled them 0 to 7 in each axis. Um, and what I've done is I've put in all the words and with... Um, a number where each digit, the tens is x and the units are y. Um, so for instance, a, naught, naught is up here. Five, naught, two, one, two, 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 three, two. So it's, um, and you can see that we've got naught, two, one, two, 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 three, two, which spells out five. Um, so the next steps, um, we're going to set up the, um, the graphics and the code we had before. And then we've got a function called output words. Um, so this will clear the graphics and it will go through a list of words. So if I uh, run this, I just set start scanning here. So if I say app words and I write in five, we'll have to do that in an array. We'll see that it um, it now outputs five. Uh, so if I write in, uh, in fact, if I just do this and split it, quarter to five, um, because we've changed our words here so that this five doesn't interfere with that five we actually have to put a little underscore under each one. Do underscore there, and we'll just do dot split so that we turn that string into an array. And instantly it's writing quarter to five. So then the next step really is um, working out how to turn the time into words. And um, I've got a function that does that as well here. So, um, Obviously it's got all the words that we'll use for the minutes and for the hours. It tries to find the nearest minute um, because it can only do it to the nearest five minutes. And then it puts the hours in and um, it chooses whether it's going to have to do past or two. So if I put this in and I say time to words, um, we'll just say 11 o'clock maybe. And it says 11. If we say five, let's say quarter past 11. If I make this 50, it should say 10 to 12. Um, so then it's pretty easy to just feed this straight in. So rather than doing this every second, we're, we're actually just going to check every minute. Um, and uh, we get the current time. Uh, so if, if we look at what's actually in the current time, um, this has been set up and all you have to do is go into communications and make sure that set current time is set here. And then when you upload your code, the IDE will ensure that the time's correct. Once it's uploaded, obviously it says 11, which is kind of boring, but that's what the time is. Um, and that is our clock. Um, so literally all you have to do now is type save and um, it will save all of this and it will automatically boot up. 
The only problem is that when it boots up, the time won't be set correctly. Um, so you can go to this page and you can then set the time without having to go through the IDE. So that's how to make a really simple word clock. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this, please subscribe and um, check out some of the other videos that I've got on the channel. Thank you.